Hey, this is Professor Perez. In this video, we are going to deal with complex fractions. We are also going to demonstrate our Kung Fu fractions technique using the lowest common denominator. Well, realistically, this is called clearing fractions with the lowest common denominator, but we like the word Kung Fu better, right? Okay, let's get started, but let's make sure Charlie's ready to go. Hey, Charlie, ready to go? All right, we're doing complex fractions. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think this is fun, huh? All right, let's get started right there. Two thirds divided by one fourth. What do we do when we divide with a fraction, Charlie? Multiply by the reciprocal. That's right. So we're going to change it to two thirds times four over one. And how do we multiply fractions? Straight across top, straight across bottom. Very nice there, Charlie. Okay, so we get eight thirds for our answer. Now, let's do the same problem, but let's use a different approach. Notice we have two thirds divided by one fourth. We wrote it in a form that we call a complex fraction. A complex fraction has fractions up in the numerator and can also have fractions down in the denominator. So it's like a fraction that has fractions. That's a complex fraction. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear these fractions or kung fu them using the lowest common denominator of both those fractions. So notice we have two thirds and a one fourth and the smallest number that a three and a four divide evenly into is 12. Remember, those denominators will both divide into 12. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 12. This is going to allow us to clear those fractions. Remember in our last video, Kung Fu fractions, if the denominator is divided into that whole number, the fractions got cleared. Well, we know those denominators will divide into that whole number because that whole number is the lowest common denominator, remember? And a lowest common denominator means that those denominators will divide evenly into it, so they're gonna get cleared out. That's why we use the lowest common denominator here. So, let's come full here, Charlie. 12 divided by three is four. Four times two is eight. In the denominator, 12 divided by four is three. And three times one is three, eight thirds. That's our answer, Kung Fu. Now, if you practice this, you will get very efficient at solving complex fractions. You just look at them and say, well, the answer is eight thirds. Give me another one. Anyway, let's continue on here. Here we have negative three sevenths divided by five over 21. Let's find the lowest common denominator. Remember, start with the largest denominator. We have a three sevenths on the numerator and a five over 21 in the denominator. 21 is the largest denominator. Does 21 work? Yes, it does. So let's multiply both numerator and denominator by 21. 21 divided by seven is three, and three times a negative three is a negative nine. Right here, 21 divided by 21 is one, one times five is five, there's our answer, negative nine fifths, or negative nine fifths. That's your answer there. All right, how about this one? 11 sixths, subtract two thirds, all over three fourths plus three halves. Don't get scared. We're gonna use our Kung Fu. Now we have four fractions and they all have different denominators. We have to find a lowest common denominator for all of our fractions that are involved in our complex fraction. So what's the smallest number that a six, a three, a four, and a two divide evenly into? Start with the largest denominator, six. Does six work? No, it doesn't because four does not divide evenly into six. So start with a multiple of six. Go six plus six is 12. Does 12 work? Yes, it does. All those numbers divide evenly into 12. And so that is our lowest common denominator. So what do we do? We multiply both the top and the bottom by 12. Now in this case, notice we have a 12 outside the parentheses. So what property do we have to use, Charlie? Distributive property. That's right, the distributive property. So basically every term is gonna get multiplied by that lowest common denominator. And so we distribute in the numerator and distribute in the denominator, and that's how we get that result up there. Now we can kung fu. Let's do the first one. 12 divided by six is two. Two times 11 is 22. Subtract. 12 divided by three is four. Four times two is eight. Very nice there. Now, Charlie, do the bottom one for us. 12 divided by four is three. Three times three is three. Very nice there, Charlie. Now bring us home. 12 divided by two is Very nice there, Charlie. All of our fractions got kung fu Now we just gotta do basic arithmetic. 22 subtract eight is 14. Nine plus 18 is 27. And that is our final answer, kung fu. All right, anyway, let's try this one here. Five fourths subtract two. Pay attention, Charlie. Six fifths plus three halves. We have three fractions here, right? Don't worry about that two, that's a whole number. Worry about the fractions. 
we have a 5, a 4, and a 2. Our largest denominator is a 5. Does 5 work? No. Let's try multiples of 5. 5 plus 5 is 10. Does that work? No. 5 plus 5 plus 5 is 15. Does 15 work? No. 2 does not divide evenly into 15. So let's try 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5. That's 20. Does 20 work? Yes, all those numbers divide evenly into 20, so our lowest common denominator is 20. Now again, that's just one technique of doing it. Some of you just look at it and just automatically know, oh, it's 20. Well, if you can do that, that's good. But some of us need a little bit of extra help, right? Especially him. Anyway, what? now that we have the lowest common denominator, we're going to multiply numerator and denominator of our complex fraction with that 20. And now we have to use what property, Charlie? Distributive. That's right, the distributive property, right? So. We distribute in the numerator and distribute in our denominator, and everything gets multiplied by 20, even the whole number. Don't forget to multiply the whole number by that 20, the LCD, because the distributive property says you've got to multiply the first number, and you also have to multiply the second number, so don't forget that. Now in Kung Fu, 20 divided by 4 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. Subtract. Now, 20 times 2, this is not a fraction, right? It's just 20 times 2, and that's 40. Don't forget that. Now, down here in our denominator, 20 divided by 5 is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. Plus, 20 divided by 2 is 10, and 10 times 3 is 30. Now, we just perform our arithmetic. 25 subtract 40 is negative 15, and 24 plus 30 is 54. Now, can we reduce this? Remember our divisibility rule for 3. I said if, if the digits sum up to a sum that's divisible by 3, that number is divisible by 3. So we have 15. A 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So since the sum is divisible by 3, 15 must be divisible by 3. Now for 54, is that divisible by 3? Well. 5 plus 4 is 9. 9 divided by 3 is 3. Yes, it is. Therefore, 54 must be divisible by 3. And so, if we divide 3 into 15 and 54, we do get negative 5 18 for our final answer. So, that was a tough one to reduce. But anyway, that's enough Kung Fu for today. I hope to see you again soon.